Hi there, it's Kevin Sandy again coming to you with Youth Mentorship Training. Now, you might be a parent, you might be a youth worker, you might be a teacher, but you really feel challenged, in fact, more than challenged. You're like frustrated, desperately looking for a way to help these youths, these students, this child who is bothering you, who's frustrating you and just not getting it right. And you're trying all sorts of things. Well, we're dealing now with the five root challenges, the five root causes, why um, youths are misbehaving, destructive, why they are being distracted, why they are looking to fight every day and they want to follow the gangs instead of following the right path, why most youths are really struggling with technology and they're just being like they're addicted to technology. Well, there are these five root causes and we need to deal with those before we deal with the actual behavior. If you don't deal with the root, you're not going to deal with the fruit, right? You're going to do whatever you want to deal with the outcome, but you must be with the root, right? Now, we spoke about physical versus spiritual already. We spoke about um, ideas versus language or revelation versus language. And then we spoke also about sons versus slaves. Well, today we want to talk about one of the big ones, right? That's rulership versus religion one of the challenges we have is that a lot of people are into the spirituality thing right like if something new it's not new but it's just a different flavor in which people bring out or trying to find themselves okay now a lot of youths are against religion so anytime you start to talk about god and jesus in their minds you're trying to push religion down their throat and we as adults have to blame for that. We, we learned that the wrong way. We learned about God the wrong way. And therefore, they're rebelling against it because they're not seeing uh, religion doing anything. As a matter of fact, they realize that religion is false. They have picked up on it. But more than the adults have, they have seen the deception of religion. And they don't want it. And you know what happened? God doesn't want it either. God doesn't like religion. God is not religious. As a matter of fact, if you check, in God's word, you realize that he doesn't see himself as a religious person. He doesn't tell you about his religious, him being a religious person. As a matter of fact, when you look at the Bible, the first verse said in the beginning, or in beginnings, God created. First thing God we'll talk about is creation. Creating, being a creator. As a matter of fact, look at that. Creativity, being creative, right, is the first thing God introduces himself as. Why is that? Why is that? Why is this say, I am, I am, in the beginning, God was the religious being, right? And we have these different battles going on between different religions, you know, Buddha versus Christianity versus Allah versus, I mean, all these sort of things. It's Muslim versus Hindu versus, I mean, it's just chaotic, it's confusion. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want that either. As a matter of fact, the youths are struggling and fighting each other because they're looking for a way out, but they just want the right way. They want something that works, that's proven to be true. Not something that people make up. Not something that somebody come up with. Right? And if we look through how God presents himself and presents us, it's rulership. It's dominion. He talks about that in his first, the first book of the Bible, the first chapter, talks about how God introduced us, people, human beings as creature, creators to dominate, right? As a matter of fact, Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 20, God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So God actually said to himself, to himself, to the God being, let us, right? As opposed to when he was talking about creating birds and creatures and, and fish, he spoke to sea, he spoke to the air, he spoke to the land. But when it's time to create us, he spoke to himself. He said, let us make man. And he didn't just say, let them be. He said, let us make. So he used a different term. He's crafting something. He's designing something with special care, right? And he's making it in his image to kind of resemble him, to represent him, his likeness, his behaviors, his functions, his operations. So built into every human being is that desire to be God or be like God. Of course, it was corrupted where people want to be God instead of being like God, right? And of course, we have to just set it straight. 
God created us to rule. Not each other, but to rule everything else. All of us are rulers. But they need to know that. The youth doesn't know that. They're not aware of that. As a matter of fact, in their minds, as far as they're concerned, the next person have what is theirs. That is why they go and they steal. The next person have something more than what they have. And what they don't know is that in the, in the understanding of rulership, there is more than enough. You see, what happened? When a, a parent, a good parent, prepares for a child, they prepare everything. As a matter of fact, um, I know in the Jewish community, they, they, do, they go to the extreme and really prepare. They do just prepare a crib or, or a place to, for the child to sleep, um, clothes, um, uh, play toys, an environment, a room decorated. It's not just that alone, you know. They prepare accounts for the child. Yeah. Where the child, this, this business system or this account or this, this enterprise that this child is going to run. And the child haven't born yet. That's how God, that's what God did. God prepared everything on the planet for every single human being that was going to be born. But here is even more profound. Every human being was supposed to remain alive when God created them, created Adam and Eve. Every human being that is supposed to be born after that was supposed to remain alive on the same planet, without the planet getting bigger. Think about that for a moment. This same planet, which was already created, with everything inside of it, was built sustainable. It was built as a sustainable system where God is the only one who sustained it. All we did was maintain <laughs> what he sustained. So Adam was supposed to be alive. Eve was supposed to be alive. Cain and Abel were supposed to be alive. All of the people who died were supposed to be alive on the same planet and live comfortably. You see, somebody fooled us. Um, there's this whole concept of um, survival of the fittest and, and all this sort of thing. And of course, we got Avengers, you know, with, with, with Thanos saying, hey, the, 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 the earth need restructuring, need resetting. There's too much. The resources are being depleted. And, and people talking this foolishness around the world. Let me tell you something. Food is being dumped. Billions of dollars of food is being dumped every day around the world. And there are people starving. You see, there is more than enough. Not just enough anymore. More than enough for everyone. But they're not aware of that. So we, somebody need to show them, hey, when somebody have something whether it's education, whether it's clothes, whether it's a piece of technology, whether it's a transport, a vehicle, a nice house, whatever it is. Let me tell you something. They got theirs. Hey, what we are supposed to do is show them, as a ruler yourself, you have the capacity to go and get yours. It is available for everybody. But because of corrupt systems, you know, a lot of people have stolen. But there are still ways and means to attract it to you, to get it to you. There are ways and means. You see, when somebody's driving down the road and the place is hot and they're thirsty, the guy on the side of the road with the water, he is, becomes the most valuable person right now. They wind down, they put down their glass, put out the money, and, and get a bottle of water. Right? The person doesn't have to beg them to buy the water. Right? What they did is that they went in a place where people are passing who might need water to be available for them. Just water, imagine that. Water. You can imagine what else you could provide. But they need to be aware of those things that built into them is the capacity to provide something, to rule over something, to dominate something. And that thing they dominate in is needed by somebody is needed. It's a solution that's needed. So they need to learn. So we as mentors, as teachers, as parents, need to be able to educate our children correctly. And when I say educate, I'm not talking about academic education. I'm talking about original education, which is the original information about how we were designed. As a matter of fact, um, a, a young guy who came off to, became a king, um, very good musician, right, known as David, he wrote, 
I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He discovered, wait a minute, the, me, I am so intricately designed. It cannot be a chance. God designed me intricately special. Right? That no human being could replicate that. So that needs to be taught to our children. They need to be realized how special they are already. And how special the other person is. That just as how they are rulers, the other persons are rulers as well. But you see, the thing is, we need to divorce the old system, or the sorry, not the old system. We need to divorce the corrupt system that has been designed by human beings through academic education. We need to re remove it and replace it with the original system, the original system of living, how, earth, how the world was designed originally. Because you see, what the, what the academic system is saying is that we are rulers over people. So that's why supervisors and bosses have this idea that they can demand with authoritarian um, uh, uh, mindset, an authoritarian mindset, they can demand for people to do certain things. That is not humane. That is inhumane. Because the person needs to be aware, hey, no human being can rule over you. No human being can demand from you. They can ask, but they can't demand. There's a difference. Because that's rulership. Rulership was not given to people to rule over people. As a matter of fact, God himself chose he designed us and he chose not to rule over us. He designed to give us the option to become his children. Right? As king over us, voluntarily, we could choose to become kings under him as kings. That is why he's called the king of kings. Not the king of slaves, not the king of servants, the king of kings. So they need to realize as sons, as people, as human beings, they can become sons of God, one. And secondly, as human beings, no human have the right to rule over them. So we have lost, Adam lost everything, right? We, we know that. that, that's before. And religion came into place, corruption came into place, everything. Sin destroyed everything and corrupted everything and turned everything upside down. It's like you having a palace and then you decide to leave the palace for a while and go somewhere else. You come back 10 years later, nobody taking care of it. What do you think is going to happen? Cobweb, grass growing all over the place, dust. I mean, animals, creatures all over. It will become a mess. That is exactly what happened. We got corrupted. Everything got corrupted. So every person born after that, born in a corrupt state. right? As a matter of fact, this is how we put it. The word of God put it this way. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all gone to our own way. Right? We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Glory has to do with the weight of the presence of someone. It's like when someone steps into your yard or into your home and the authority and the pomp and the splendor of the person shows up at the same time. Wow. It's like the full weight. It's like you feel something as if, wow, this person is of tremendous authority, tremendous power. We have lost that and we have become slaves. That's why I spoke about for about slaves versus sons. But now we have an opportunity to show them you can return to your original father and become the original person you were created, designed to be. You no, they no longer have to live under the authority or this deception of religion. Because your religion was developed by man to try to get to God, to try to understand God to try to put rules and rituals in place so that man could follow to find God. And the youths are aware of that. They're youths. What is rules they're trying to give me? What is rules and rituals? They're trying to restrict me and limit me. But if you get them to understand, as a king, you restrict yourselves because you're a king, because you need to rule, because you need to think straight, because you need to operate a certain way. When they understand themselves as kings, they realize, I can't just do anything with this. I, this, I need to be responsible for this because this is valuable. I'm not just, I'm not just anybody or anybody could just push around. I'm a king here. And as a king, I can rule things. And for me to rule things, I need to know to rule me. <laughs> I need to know to bring me to a place where, hey, 
whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just eat everything, drink anything, do anything. No, 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 no. That is destroying yourself. That is, that is slavery. That is living under the slavery mentality, as I spoke about before, of something else, like living under the slave of alcohol or living under the slavery of drugs or living under the slavery of a gun. So the gun is ruling you or the, or the knife is ruling you or the drugs is ruling you, you know? I mean, we don't want that. But that's what religion now is trying to solve the problem by putting different limitations or restrictions because religion is trying to say, hey, instead of destroying yourself, let me give you some rituals, some rules so you can help yourself and line up to find God. <laughs> but that's not the way to do it. So it's, it's like there is a solution to the problem, but instead of finding the right solution, religion brings a substitute solution. So things get worse. Okay. As a matter of fact, most of the wars in the world were results of religion. Most of them were results of religious devouts, religious beliefs. Not rulership belief, results of religious beliefs. Right? Their own idea about how God works and what God wants. Right? Not trying to find out originally how did God design everything to operate and to function. Let's find that out first. Let me go beyond what I was taught to question what I was taught to find out. Is this true? Is this real? Is this what God really wants? And a lot of times we need to do that, right? Um, that is why I said one of the things we need to be able to do when we are interacting with youth is to question them when they're doing things. Find the right questions to ask. Is this what you want? Where do you want to go? What are you trying to do? Why are you doing that? Why are you here in this school? What is it you really want to achieve? What's your plan to achieve that? You know? So a lot of times they have a plan, they have an idea of what they want, and what they're doing, they follow the wrong company because they see what the wrong company did. And in this world today, it's very glamorous. The wrong company is very glamorous in your face on social media. I mean, very glamorous. It's very, very out there, you know? So what we have to do as... As teachers and mentors, we have to get back to the original father, daddy, and find out how do I convince, how do I influence, how do I persuade, how do I get them, these children to know, these youths to understand that what they're seeing there is fake, is a deception, is not real. <laughs> that behind the scenes there is something that's happening that they're not aware of. You know? I mean, they, they discuss, some of them. Sometimes the information about different <laughs> artists and so forth and actors and actresses comes out and they get to see the corruption and the craziness. But how can we get them to question it even before it comes out? Is that what I'm seeing real? I mean, now, as I said before in, in, in one of the introductions that, in my introduction um, video, if you want to go back and look at that, that there's a deception coming. With metaverse, the deception is worse. Because the metaverse is designed to create an alternate you. A person that looks like you, speaking like you, saying things in, from their mouth like you, but not you. It's really, really tough. So it's going to get worse. But we need to prepare. We need to prepare our children. Right? So we want to find out the process to get them from religion to rulership. One is to show the deception of religion. You have to show that religion wasn't designed by God. It's designed to enslave people according to man's rulership. Right? Kind of like the, the, the authoritarian boss in the company. It was designed to do that. But we need to now show them deception and then get them to, to understand where they originally created to be. Who they originally created to be. But what happened? We got deceived. We went to another father, the devil, right? He's the father of people in the world now, not God. But we now have to decide individually. No, 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 no. I don't want the devil to be my father at all. I want God to be my father. And you have to make the adjustment. You have to make the decision. Because when God is your father, you are king. When, when the devil is your father, you are slave. Basically, that's it. <laughs> Right? Living like a slave. No, you. No, one of the deceptions is that he makes you feel as if you're mannish, like if you're your boss. Makes you. It actually makes you feel that way. You're in charge of things. 
Real good at that. That's a deception, you know. Really good with that deception. Make you feel in charge. Powerful. I can make my own decision. Do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> but the end leads to death. Destruction. Killing each other. Mismanagement. Destruction. Flooding in the place. Earthquakes like mad. Right? Overheating planet. Accidents on the road. Because why? Because we went our own way. There's a way that seems right. The Bible says, it's a way that seems right, it feels right, it looks right, it tastes right. But the end is you're killing yourself, right? Do you know that very sumptuous, beautiful, tasteful food <laughs> is very destructive to your body? <laughs> but it tastes so good. Uh, hmm. <laughs> so it's so important to be able to know, hey, just a little bit. Because, let me tell you something, killing ourselves with madness, right? Food. <laughs> so, the devil, is, the devil is like that. He's very good. Take more of it, man. Take, I mean. So, you have to be able to show them the deception of religion. How the devil designed it to lead them away to a place that looks good. Broad, nice highway. Let's race, right? The, 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 Jesus put it this way. The road that leads to destruction is broad. And people just run into it. Yeah, man. It brought yeah, man. Freedom. But it's a deception. Lead down the, a cliff. Right? This, a broad highway leading down to a cliff. All right? That is, how, that is how crazy it is with religion. It looks good. It feels good. It sounds good. Man, the end leads to death. So we need to get them to rulership next. What it means to live now as a son of God. What it means to get back to the original daddy and be, live as kings, as rulers again, right? Where our environment change because we are here. Our environment is in order, not chaos. Order takes place because we show up, right? Now, there's a false order that gang leaders try to promote because they show up with their gun, right? But what happens is that it's another deception. It forces people to follow them. They're not following it, their free will. They cause, they force them by manipulation. Not by inspiration, by manipulating them, by deceiving them to make them think that they have power because they have a gun and they can rule the place. So we need to bring another power, the real power, to show up that can defy the power of a gun, the power of rulership, the power of royalty. All right? That power, that heavenly power from the Spirit of God can defy any gun, any knife, any day. All right? That's how. No, there's no compare, no comparison. All right? So let's learn. Let's learn as mentors, as teachers, how to tap into the original design God had of rulership. Get out of religion and show them the principles that can actually make them youths who are responsible, youths who are purposeful, youths who are respectful, youths who, who bring order to the city, to the community, to homes, to the nations of the world. All right? We can do that. It can be done. All right? So try it. Let me know. Leave the comments. Let me know what's happening. And as usual, if you want to get in touch with me, just check the information below and contact me for more. Let me know what I need to do, what I could change. Or oh, also, hey, tell me about some things that you're experiencing in your world. What are you experiencing from the youths around you, in your school, in your home, in your community, that you need help with, that you need guidance with? Let, let me know so I could, we could work on it. We can work on it. We can share some things about how to deal with that. What has happened before? What have we used before? What, what have God taught us that may be able to help you in your situation? All right? Share with us. Share with me. Let me know. All right? And I really hope that this brings a blessing to you and brings transformation to the youths in your world. Okay? Bless you.